Hello and this is Babbitton Unlimited. Let's see what's in store this week. India's Thomas Cup winning coach Matthias Bo sheds a little light on how the South Asian men achieved their greatest triumph in Bangkok. On paper, maybe Indonesia and Denmark was the biggest favourites. We took both of them down. And Bay Win Jiang reveals the secret behind her swift recovery from her Tokyo 2020 heartbreak. If you used to get like a, always find a happy for you, like find a way to make yourself happy, is more you do it, the more easier. Last week, the HSBC BWF World Tour 2022 was back in full swing with the GR Toyota Gazoo Racing Thailand Open 2022. Held at the Impact Arena in Bangkok, the Super 500 event had attracted a stellar cast of shuttlers across all five categories. Semi-finals day saw Dechapul Puvaranokuro and Sapsuri Teratanachai entertaining the home crowd with a sensational three-game win over Olympic champions Wang Yi Liu, Huang Dongping. And they've done it! However, the reigning world champions were stopped from claiming the title in the final, up against Jung Si Wei and Huang Ya Chong. The Thais endured a difficult start before finding their feet. It's one game all! Both pairs wrestled to seize the attacking initiative, but in the end, it was Jung and Huang who gained the upper hand to seal their first World Tour crown in two years. Face Chen Yufei was on a mission to capture her first World Tour title of the year, and her straight games victory over Prusala v Sindhu in the semi-finals was testament to her ambitions. Defensively solid throughout the 43-minute contest, her Indian opponent found it hard to fashion openings against the Olympic champion. She's a retriever, so I think uh, from my side I should have been a bit more consistent. I think from my side I've, I've been doing mistakes, I was hitting out or into the net. I think that made a difference because I was coming close but then again, you know, she was maintaining that lead. A repeat of the Tokyo 2020 gold medal contest followed in the final where this time it was Chun's turn to lose out. Tai Tzu Ying, the Olympic silver medalist, made the most of her opponent's passive approach with her vibrant shot making. Wonderful. With Tai continuing to find fluency in her attacks and Chun laboring to keep up, it was clear who would win that 20th meeting. Just 就是打得不是特别舒服 from qualifier to finalist, Li Shifeng's amazing run at the Thailand Open was eventually halted by Malaysia's Li Zijia. But the Asian champion needed to overcome an opening game loss where his Chinese opponent showed instances of his raw power. Beautiful attack from uh, Li Shifeng. Lizzy Jia was quick to regroup in the following game, upping his tempo and making the most of his attacking opportunities. However, 
The Malaysian star was left trailing in the deciding game as his unseeded opponent threatened to pull an upset. Oh, no, that's, that's the lack of patience, isn't it? With the score 2019 in favour of Li Shifeng, Li Zijia dramatically saved the match point. Unbelievable. Oh. Unbelievable. Oh, that was amazing. The world number six completed his comeback with a final score 17 21, 21 11, 23 21. I think at the moment, uh... I already, I already prepared the worst and uh, it, it could be lost, I, I could be lost the game and I just told myself I have to, you know, get every point I can and just, just try every point I can and yeah, like I said, finally I did it and I'm very happy. I think it's all about experience and I think uh, so far I've been through a lot of things and uh, all, all those lessons taught me a lot of things and I think that that's why I, I, I became who I am today, yeah. After taking out top seeds Chen Ching Chen, Jia Yi Fan in the last eight, Nami Matsuyama and Shiharu Shida continued their progress with a convincing takedown of Pearly Tan and Tina Murali Karan in the semi finals. The All England champions proved too good for the Malaysians as they close out the match in straight games. It set up an intriguing title clash with compatriots Mayu Matsumoto and Wakana Nagehara, who were keen to get back on the winning trail. The former world number one settled quickly in the match, taking the first game in decisive fashion. But Nagahara would struggle with her defensive game, ceding momentum to Matsuyama Shida, who capitalized with ruthless efficiency. Uh, across the body of Nagahara this time. It was neck and neck in the third game, with both pairs refusing to yield. This is a big point. Yeah. Oh, it's gone, gone long! Matsuyama Shida eventually would do just enough to clinch victory, concluding an entertaining encounter. なってのはずっと感じて、2人とも感じてたんですけど、そこを今日 2人 and So Wu Yik in the semi-finals meant Fajar Alfian and Mohamed Rian Ardianto entered their third World Tour final of the year. But the ultimate clash against Takuro Hoki and Yuga Kobayashi had to end prematurely when Alfian was forced to retire after sustaining a back injury. That's yeah. very, very unfortunate. Pastinya kecewa juga, tapi ya daripada nanti kita dipaksakan malah kurang bisa maksimal di untuk next pertandingannya. Jadi lebih baik kita istirahat dulu, memulihkan kondisi dan mempersiapkan untuk next pertandingan. Tokyo we stick together, if we stay united on court, if we lift each other support from the dugout, that we actually have a fair chance of winning. That was the spirit we went into it, and that just like kept on carrying us through the match, through the match, through the next match. With the dust still settling from India's momentous Thomas Cup victory at the Impact Arena in Bangkok recently, we spoke with a beaming Matthias Bo, one of the coaches who helped orchestrate the team's finest hour. The Dane, in his second stint with the Indian national team as its doubles coach, revealed how the players relished their tag as pre-tournament dark horses of this year's World Men's Team Championships. We actually came into this tournament uh, believing that we, we had a chance. We were one of the contenders, not the favourites, but, but a little bit outsider. And 
often it's it's a good position to be in because if you ask the the Chinese, if you ask the Malaysians, then they would not like rule us out, but they would not point us at us at, as one of the one of the main contenders. India made the cut to the last eight as runners-up of Group C and were drawn against a Malaysian team led by the talented Li Zijia. But as the events unfolded, it was in the third singles that would prove decisive in the knockout stages. Powering that crucial slot for India was the inspired HS Pumal. The world number 23 would first clinch the winning points against the Southeast Asians before repeating the same heroics in the semi-final versus the highly fancy Denmark. Five, six, history is rewritten. Never mind it was the first time India had reached the final in Thomas Cup's 73-year history. Never mind they were up against 14-time champions Indonesia. India were hungry for glory. Their players chomping at the bit for one of the most coveted titles in world badminton. Kidabi Srikant's smashing winner against the hapless Jonathan Christie summed up their campaign. Relentless and full of belief. Beating Denmark yesterday, um, beating Malaysia also a quarter-final and then today beat Indonesia. Um, on paper, maybe Indonesia and Denmark was the biggest favourites. We took both of them down. On paper, all these matches are, are very tight. Like, I, there is a lot of uh, experts and so on who said, oh, this should go to Indonesia, this may be to India. And if you go out and do your tactical preparation and you just play with your spirit and try and keep the initiative on court and be attacking, then everyone got a, a, a fair chance at this level. So, yeah, it's, it's just like, it's difficult with words to describe how, how proud I am of my team. It's, uh, yeah, it's, it's crazy to be a part of. More from Bo later and also American ace Bei Wan Dang after the break. Stay with us. For me, it's like it's just a good timing to come here back. Welcome back. We continue our chat with one of India's Thomas Cup winning coaches, Matthias Bo. The 41-year-old knew what it took to win one of the biggest honours in badminton, having lifted the cup with Denmark as a player back in 2016. The know-how of it was something that the Dane was eager to pass on to his charges in the run-up to India's historic victory. I tried to, to use the experience I had for when we won with, with Denmark. Um, and as we talked about many times, that at that time we didn't maybe have the best players, but we had the best team. We had the best team spirit, both on court, in the dugout, and off court. Uh, so I said to, to my players, like, we're, we're, we're a team, we carry each other. Um, and, and we don't have like, maybe that just that victor where we just say, okay, it's, we're pretty confident with him winning all the singles or something. That's not how we were not that fortunate to, to have that. But we really, really had a good team. We had players that were stepping up. Bo's pedigree in men's doubles proved telling, especially for Sadwuk Sairad Ranki Reddy and Shirag Shetty in the final. Taking on Indonesia's all-star pairing of Mohamed Ahsan and Kevin Sanjaya Sukumuljo, Bo's guiding hand helped the towering Indians to hold their ground before coming out on top. If we can tactically play wise, if we can play with power, if we can get the, the shots under the tape, then we have a good chance of winning. They stayed in it. That was what I said when it was like final call 19, 15 down in the second. I said, stay in it. You never know what happens. It's just one or two points. The opponents get even. They're so experienced as the Sun and Kevin is. You get a little bit tense, a little bit nervous in the record, and then you make mistakes. That's a misjudgment from Sukumolio. It's totally natural. It's very easy to, as a player to understand how what emotion is going through you. Their point placed India firmly in the driving seat en route to a glorious 3-0 triumph. A first Thomas Cup for India and a second for Bo, but that winning feeling was enough for the Dane. It's a little bit diff uh, different winning it for the first time and then the second time. You don't get the exactly the same, same high as uh, the next time as the first time, but you know, be able to be some sort of, of a guidance on this team, it's, uh, it, it, it gives you something that uh, I, I must admit. And, and right now I just need to, to relax, celebrate a little bit with the team and then uh, just uh, digest this uh, yeah, outrageous performance. First is like, yes, of course I have like set, set time, but I maybe just take a few days for me. <laughs> yeah, it's not always looking for positive. If you used to 
get like a, always find a happy for you. Like find a way to make yourself happy. Is more you do it, the more easier. So I think the most most shock for me is happening in the Olympic, but I'm just take for a week to kind of recover, like mentally everything to get ready back. Yeah, it's sometimes also like be is good for be sad because when you when you know like what happens you will find a way to crawling back Bei Wenjiang's lifelong dream of becoming an Olympian was fulfilled in Tokyo last year After facing years of turmoil and tribulation in her badminton journey Bei Wen saw her resilience pay off as she made her Olympic debut but that dream ended when the American suffered a horrific injury in the round of 16. Baywin recalls that bittersweet moment. Obviously, like when I was there, I didn't really feel so much because there's no audience there. But of course, it is special for me. Everything you are in the village, everyone's worked so hard, everyone's been pumping up. And yeah, it's really excited because you can see from their eyes it's actually diff different with other compared with other tournaments. Yeah, and uh, also we are prepared well. Uh, I was like training three, uh, two and a half months fully. That's never been happens before. <laughs> uh, yeah, <laughs> yeah, being professional is a really shame to say that, but. Yeah, it's really, really rare for me to just train two and a half months fully. First is no tournaments and second was like COVID. Yeah. It's so, so hard to travel, I'm not going to Asia. And then COE, uh, Denmark, yeah. is the only where opened. Okay. Yeah. Yes, also uh, I prepared pretty much because my coach before, uh, my coach, he went Olympic on 2016. So uh, he have experience and he knows what to prepare. So uh, like I'm fully following like what he told me to do. Yeah, I, that's why I said what situations happens in Olympics is what we expected. Yeah. I didn't really see that coming and I thought it was just here, but when it touched my Achilles, it's nothing. It just went like my foot was just went down, and then I know it was like, oh no, like it's fully ruptured because it's gone. You went when you touch it, it feels like you just touch, like there's nothing in between there. And I was telling my coach like, oh, it's fully ruptured, and my coach. Said, Really, and then you could, and I was like, I tried to standing up, I couldn't. Yeah, um, I feel feeling sad about it. I couldn't finish the match. I'm prepared for so long. I can't accept my losing, but I can't accept I'm losing this way. It's it just going out immediately. You know, it's like it's not like oh you've been hurting somewhere, but you're able to finish the match. It's a different feeling because I was injured before, like a tearing, muscles tearing, everything, but I able to finish the match. But this way is like, you have to be carried out from your coach. Yeah, it's hard to just be accept in that moment immediately. I was like, I'm just sitting there, I was like, I couldn't even stand up right now. <laughs> Uh, I sit and uh, been tied up because it's like it won't be like they they gonna put the positions uh, don't let my Achilles going up as much as possible. So I was like face down on the on the table and they're they rolling on my, my legs that was hurting like shit. It's so bad. I when I ruptured that moment, I just feel like. Some someone snapped my Achilles, but that that's not so bad. <laughs> when I was a bit, I was screaming, I was crazy, hurt. It's like someone like just chop off my leg. That feeling. Yeah, it's so so bad. It's like even they're touching my toe. It's hurting like shit. Yeah. Uh, 
Actually, when I landed in uh, LA and I'm going to hospital immediately, and the doctor checked up me and because the leg is swollen pretty bad. I was wearing the compression, but still swollen pretty bad. And then they have to wait my swollen going down and doing a surgery. So when I doing surgery, I was waiting for a full, full week. Actually, I was like doing gym when I able to standing, yeah, because uh, I don't want to get fat. <laughs> and I think I was ahead to the gym when when I just finished surgery one month later. Okay. Yeah, upper body, core, and then now the legs, uh, glued, and the uh, leg of legs. Yeah. In less than a year, Baywin had not only recovered from a career-threatening Achilles injury, but also found her way back on the court. True to her spirit, the 31-year-old did once more not admit defeat and bounced back in inspiring fashion, culminating in a title victory with her team in the Danish league. Baywin has completed her comeback. For from my doctor and my PT said I'm the quickest one in their like in their life like a, like a, get the I think they had like so many players are have Achilles uh, injury but they never seem since like people are seven months to be able to to get back and I was like okay that's great news because I thought I was slow they said normally six to nine months that's what they said but I don't know, six months should be able to go back like starting their training. I thought it was six to nine months going back there on their own. <laughs> yeah, that's, that's what I thought. I think first I faced what, what is my situation pretty quick. I think I only sat for a week and I was like, I don't, I don't care anymore. <laughs> so I think the first, the most important part is that you have to be um, emotional, like happy, and you can't be like sad, worry about this all the time. First, I was just been uh, training for two weeks and uh, I'm not, here for like I have to do something some result first is like I want to go coming back to tournaments and I want to enjoy and the second is that like, I want to see where is my level right now and then what should I improve for my like next um, next month's training because I don't have coach you know that and I was in the I was in Europe and here is the here's the tournament yeah for me, it's like it's just a good timing to come back. Uh, Stamina-wise, is okay. And the speed-wise, I, I think some position for me is hot, not really able to come back. It's, um, it's also because of the landing positions and the, the muscle like is not enough to, for, uh, to carry me coming back. That's the most important part for me because uh, doctor said if I'm doing wrong positions, it might be go like to, like to cause other injury. So I have to take care of that. Yeah. For me, I was looking for May, or if I can be like quick, then I hope I can fully get back around before Pan Am individuals. Yeah. I only, I only got support for the surgery. Yeah. Other extra cost I have to pay myself, like rehab. The uh, twenty percent of my uh, surgery I have to pay off the pocket. Yeah. So I'm being paid a lot. <laughs> okay. 
because of COVID, because of uh, surgery, if those these two is not really happens, I think I am able to to like taking care of myself. <laughs> yeah. That's all we have for now. But next week, former Korea number one Sung Ji Hyun reveals how she is enjoying an unforgettable start to her coaching career. We can champion, so I really happy and I really proud of them. Also remember to mark July 5th on your calendars as we will celebrate the very first World Badminton Day. Check out corporate.bwfbadminton.com for details on how you can experience and promote our beloved sport on this momentous day. From all of us at Badminton Unlimited, it's goodbye for now.